Guys, I did it. I bought a Black Hawk helicopter. Now this is something that's been on my vision board. It's been one of my life goals and I'm finally making it happen. And I'm gonna take you along for the ride. After I purchased this helicopter from a military auction, I have to then head down to Huntsville, Alabama, which is where it's located in the storage facility and pick it up. We're not gonna go down and fly it out of there because it needs a bunch of maintenance and inspections and all sorts of stuff done to it before we can legally and comfortably fly it around. So what you're about to see is a journey of us flying out from Salt Lake City, Utah to St. Louis, Missouri. From there, we're gonna head over to Washington, Missouri to my friend Joe at Midwest Military Equipment's yard because he's gonna let me borrow his specialty low boy trailer, which is literally perfect for hauling a Blackhawk. He also has a buddy who's gonna let me borrow his brand new Kenworth W900, Brian from JBC Transport. And from there, we're gonna get on the road down to Huntsville, Alabama. recap of what's happened so far. Usually I fly in the day early and I get the rental car and I make sure everything's good to go and then when I pick them up I have snacks in the car and everything. Well this time Dave had me flying with them. Got a rental car reserved, got to the rental car place. It was like an hour and a half long wait to get our car. So then we decided to Uber the hour distance here. Got picked up by a guy in the Uber who no working air conditioning in his car. Did the hour long drive uh, in the air, the, the band with no air conditioning. Got to the rental car place and the rental car needs fuel, too small. Just give me one of those trips where every corner is gonna be a party. Sparks couldn't figure out how to open the thingy and he kept telling me just to keep hitting it so I kept hitting it. Couldn't figure it out, look for the button. And it is just a hit thing, you just have to unlock the car. Just unlock the car, then unlocks the cap. So in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to a few different people. Now these people are very, very important and they're critical to this series that I'm gonna be creating of purchasing and owning and flying a Blackhawk. First, you've got JT Tannehill. Now JT is a good friend of mine, but he also happens to be a badass active duty Blackhawk pilot and he has been for a long time. He's served multiple tours of duty, flying combat missions, the guy's experienced, and he's just an overall badass, but more importantly, he's a close friend of mine. And you guys may remember him from the video where we got kidnapped up in the mountains. But JT is basically my guy when it comes to helping me figure out what to do with this thing. And he's gonna teach me how to fly it. He's my instructor. He's like my right hand man on this deal. Next, you're gonna meet Joe Ott. Joe Ott is hands down the best aviation mechanic I've ever met in my entire life. He owns a big outfit down in Kentucky called Thoroughbred Aviation. I trust Joe with my life with my money and with this whole project. The thing about Joe is he is honest, he's extremely smart, and he's got a huge facility with an excellent staff that can figure out just about anything. So they're the guys that I trust to be able to do all of the work on the Blackhawk because once you buy a surplus Blackhawk, it has to go through a bunch of different inspections and maintenance. So you have what's called a PMI-1 and a PMI-2. Those are basically giant inspections. I'm talking inspections that cost anywhere between $200,000 to a million dollars, depending on what components need to be replaced. So rather than have somebody pick it apart and try to sell me parts and pieces that I might not need, Joe is gonna do those inspections for me and he's gonna tell me what the helicopter actually needs and what is required to be able to safely and comfortably fly this thing home, which is what we're hoping to do in about September once Joe is done with all of his work on it. Everybody, Joe from Midwest Military Equipment, you've seen him at our shop, but now we finally get to see your shop. Yeah, we're I've here. I've been wanting to be here for a while, man. Yeah. This, is, uh, this is kind of paradise right here, man. <laughs> Joe has the same problem that I have, which is... Guys, we have a serious problem here at the office. I'm gonna show you guys. It's This has become just like a full-blown outbreak. And you know, let me just show you what's going on here. Look at these guys. Uh, a little energy. Done with that drink yet? Yeah. See, 
my guys are all strong out on energy drinks. You see, they had low energy, so they're like, oh, we'll take an energy drink. Well, now it's just snowballed into this huge mess. They have no energy, they have no ambition, they have no drive, they're not getting the proper nutrients. So what I'm gonna do is solve this problem once and for all. You wanna know how? Bam, nutrients. Boys. Hey. Yeah. You don't have <clears throat> never really looked good. And now you just look worse. How many energy drinks have you had today? 14. 14. And how much energy do you have? None. Zero. Guys, here's the deal. Energy drinks, well, I'm just gonna come right out and say it, they're not good for you. 99% of energy drinks on the market are absolute trash. There's a couple out there that maybe have a couple good things, but to be honest with you, real energy comes from real vitamins and minerals. So guys, the solution to the low energy crisis and obviously all the other problems that these guys are experiencing due to lack of nutrition is bam, this nutritional drink. This is AG1 by Athletic Green. This is something that I drink every single morning and it has helped me improve my focus, my energy, my gut health. This is packed with like over 75 different vitamins, minerals, superfoods, all the stuff that our bodies need and crave to be able to feel better and perform better. And it's super easy to use. Literally, these are the travel packs or Get your container, take one scoop of that every single morning, and bam. I've noticed a huge difference and I want you to feel better as well. And I'm also probably gonna give these guys like an IV infusion of it because they are down right now. So if you wanna try it out, Athletic Green's gonna hook you up. Click the link in my description below. When you place your order, they're gonna give you a one year supply of vitamin D for free, plus five free travel packs. It's literally a no brainer, you can't beat it. This is one of the most important parts of my day and it's something that I rarely miss. Almost never, because it's so easy. Shake it up, literally that easy. Bro, pull yourself together. Is there energy in this? Yes, Dave, there's energy in that. It's working. So guys, if you wanna feel better, check it out. Listen guys, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical expert, I'm not making claims that this is gonna heal anything. All I'm telling you right now is I'm a guy that likes to feel good, and when I drink this, I feel better, I perform better, and my health is just overall better. So you want in? Click the link in my description below, and don't be like these clowns. Joe has the same problem that I have, which is compulsively buys military vehicles without seeing them, but his problem, well his condition is significantly worse. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a batter bug. You've got a batter bug, man. You just, he just closes his eyes and goes to town. In fact, he just bought 10 of those. Literally, like anything that you see, he probably just bought 10 or 20 of. He has the world's most comprehensive collection of surplus military trucks, parts, and equipment. Everybody that I know who's anybody who wants a military vehicle comes to Joe right here. So he's letting us use his trailer, which is a brand new trailer, Yep. which yeah. not a cheap trailer. Third it's trip out. Really? <laughs> well, no pressure, right? This is a specialty trailer, which is designed to haul a Black Hawk helicopter. Joe's also nice enough to have his friend Brian yeah, from JBC right. Transport Group let us borrow his Kenworth because our truck with Hunter is coming in through Texas right now. Gonna meet us in Alabama with our low boy. This low boy should have everything that we need to be able to move the Black Hawk, the blades, and look cool doing it. That's a good looking truck. Yeah, it's a real nice looking Beautiful. truck. Brian's proud of it, that's for sure. Now listen, the Sikorsky UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter is one of the most successful helicopters ever built of all time. It's known for its durability, its rugged just capabilities, and its brute strength. I mean, these things are massive. Just the airframe alone is like 50 feet long. It's 13 feet tall without the blades on. It's like 10 feet wide. I mean, I'm telling you, this is like the definition of an oversized load. Is that a newer truck? Uh, 21. 21? Beautiful. What I'm about to do is dangerous. This is extremely dangerous and Joe knows it. That's why he's got that smirk on his face. <laughs> Walking me back past this gate means I'm probably gonna leave here. I mean, here's the thing, I bought the helmet from him. I bought another, it's a 10 PLS. by 10 PLS, which I haven't even showed you guys yet. It's like one of two in civilian hands. Yeah. I bought the yeah, Navy I just boat. Bought the second one. You did. So now. Of course you did. <laughs> We're set up now. So yeah, now we got the only two <laughs> 10 by 10 trucks in civilian hands like these. I also bought the Navy boat from him, which he has a handful more. I mean, this is That's like, the newest truck there. That's the only one I know of in North America you, yeah, in civilian hands. Fully armored LMTV, right? Yeah, it's a right? fully armored uh, M1085A1P2. So that's what the military is currently using. Like you see all the Oshkosh trucks with the square yeah. nose. 
that's the truck right there. It got set up for where it's designed to have supplemental armor and yeah. then full armor, which if you open the doors on this truck here, you can see just how wild the armor plating is on it. You gotta, you gotta give him a tug. Holy you gotta manhandle him. Jeez. Yeah, this truck is actually a 2009 <laughs> and it's got a thousand and fifty seven original miles on it. So the guy bought this off the assembly line that I bought it from really? out of Sealy, Texas. And it's sat in a climate controlled shop since 2011. That's beautiful. I've never seen one up close and personal actually. Yeah, it was kind of an experience for me. We kind of owned everything under like the that. sun and this one this one definitely takes the cake. It's got a fully operational turret and we've got a gunner protection kit for it too. So it's got Stevenson. a C7 CAD in yeah. it and then they changed a lot. It's got hydraulic cab air ride versus the older trucks had just an air yeah. ride cab system. It's a hydraulic air ride? Yeah, it's, it's a hydraulic air ride. Oh, so if you look, they've oh. got hydraulic rams on either side. That a lot of people right. buy these longer trucks to make them expedition vehicles. Absolutely. This glass is so thick. Yeah, this this thing's legit. Like there there's What are these supposed to hold up to? Like Uh it's 50 caliber at point blank. The glass and the plating and well, everything. Well, the plating, I know for a fact. The glass, I'm sure it's 7.62 point oh. blank. Grilled growler? Yeah, a couple of growlers. Are they cool or are they They're fun. Are they? They're a lot of fun. Yeah. They've got a turbo diesel engine wow. and then they've got a uh, 4L80E automatic transmission. Yeah. And they're just kind of a combination of a whole bunch of different vehicles morphed into a <laughs> combat vehicle. And this is the only vehicle that was ever certified to fly in the V22 Osprey. That's yeah, that's what it was developed this. for. That's yeah. Us. yeah. You got a half track? I found this out in Kansas and the family that I bought it from, uh, her father bought it in 1948. Does it run? It does not run. We unloaded off the trailer and this is as far as we got. And then if you open the hood here, you'll see the world's largest rat nest. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. I don't think anybody's ever seen one like that. Dude, yeah. they <laughs> packed it in there. All right, so you got a lot of switches here. These are your airbags. If you want to glow green, the switch right here. Cab lights glow green on three. When you are oversized, if you want to run One the cab lights, they dance as well. It's very cute. Sweet. All right, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Good luck, man. I really appreciate you. Can't wait to see it, yeah. This right here, the man, Brian from JBC Transportation. You guys are right here in Washington? Uh, Warrington, Missouri. Warrington. I've never met this man, but he's a friend of Joe, and I'm a friend of Joe, and Joe reached out and said, hey, I got a buddy who's got a badass truck. Because they knew that the load that we're hauling, you can't just haul it any old no. truck. You gotta haul with something special, which this is probably one of the most thank special you, you. W9s I've ever seen in my entire life. So, so logistically, this is this is a challenge. Getting everything in the right place at the right time to be able to show up and get this thing picked up. I mean, there's a reason why there's really only kind of one company in the country that is known for transporting these helicopters. You know, I had the option of hiring them to move it, but I thought that doesn't make a good video. Hiring some specialty company, which does a really great job, doesn't make for great content. So we decided to do it ourselves, which means that we had to basically get the dimensions of a Blackhawk and build our own cradle design that sits on top of this low boy to be able to secure it to the trailer and make sure that it's just the right dimensions so that we can get oversized load permits and not be too tall for overpasses and different things like that. Much appreciated, brother. No problem. All right, Ooh. appreciate it. We're on the road. St. Louis, Missouri to Huntsville, Alabama. It took us so oh, somewhere between eight and nine hours. We stopped and had dinner. It's about 2 a.m. right now. We've got a uh, we gotta be over here at the yard getting ready to load at 8 a.m. While the guys at the yard there are loading up the Black Hawk, they're gonna take us for a ride in their demo Black Hawk. So we're going flying, we're gonna load up the trailer. Hunter should be here somewhere. He was pulling into town right around the same time we were. We're gonna stay at the hotel right here, get as much sleep as we can, shower off. You guys saw me when I started the day. It was just profuse sweat. 
By the way, that truck, Ryan from uh, JCB Transportation, got a nice rig right there. That thing's just a Cadillac. We're gonna go get our rooms, get a little bit of sleep, load up. Moving a Black Hawk helicopter on a semi-truck is much more complicated than you might even think. The logistics required to be able to put a helicopter that large on a semi-trailer along with all of its parts and pieces and move it across the country, not an easy task. And we are about to learn through trial by fire exactly what it takes to be able to move one of these monsters. Oh. That's the big ass helicopter. There she is, Mrs. 311. at the APP Depot, Advanced Precision Parts. Uh, this is one of the many steps that the government uses to be able to offload the decommissioned aircraft. They load like two or three of these things out of here every week. Everything looks good. This is my helicopter right here, number 311. That's a specialty cradle that we built specifically to hold this Blackhawk. So the tires sit down inside there, we chain that down to the trailer, and then we strap the Blackhawk down to that. So that keeps it positioned exactly where we need it. That's kind of like the secret sauce here that only one other company uses, but once we started realizing what it takes to build one of those, it was like, it took Hunter an afternoon to do it, so. I can work. buzz the tower right now we're gonna see it come by and then uh, they're gonna let me go up and sit in the pilot seat go for a little ride which is really cool uh, so Dave down at Advanced Precision Parts which is basically the warehouse that holds these Blackhawks after they're sold from the government just super cool dude he's like one of us in dealing with a government contractor like that typically it's not a great experience I'll tell you right now though dealing with Dave and his team at APP these guys are dialed he said, look, when you get here, we'll have you loaded up in and out in like 30 minutes. And I was like, all right, that's an ambitious goal, but let's do it. So we get to APP, pull in, boom. His team has the helicopter on a crane, ready to go. All I had to do was back the low boy literally into their bay garage there. And like Dave said before, within 30 minutes, the helicopter was tied down and loaded. services and some equipment for these things and so obviously it's in their best interest for me to get excited about what they do because I then potentially be a customer of theirs for whether it's their products services whatever based on my experience here so far these guys are the real deal they're awesome so this is a, a technology demonstrator aircraft we've got a weather radar flares motorcycle transport system full glass cockpit autopilot uh, terrain avoidance system, synthetic vision, with the latest and greatest state of the art cockpit. So, 
it's more modern than what the Army flies today. Welcome to the Black Hawk community. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. A warm welcome. So what you hear running right now is what's called the APU. It's a third turbine engine. It's the starter motor. That's not the that's not the drive engine you're hearing. It's literally a turbine engine that creates gas pressure that fills these accumulators. So rather than having like a regular gear starter like most aircraft and vehicles would, this uses another turbine that just blows a shit ton of air into the big turbines and that's what starts them. He shuts down the main turbines and then fires up the auxiliary turbine and that's part of the shutdown procedure because if he didn't do that, then you'd have to hand crank the accumulator pump to build the air pressure that that turbine is building right now. And apparently JT tells me that's just an absolute nightmare. So now he's shut down. That means the accumulator's full. He's got all the air pressure he needs. This is cool though. This is exactly what I wanted to see a Black Hawk doing. You know, we've seen them in military service and they do a great job there, but trying to understand and get a vision for what they look like in the private world, I mean, you're looking at it. Back in 45 minutes, probably. Everybody else is briefed. Anybody else is going? Get check us in. Let's go. I'm telling you right now that flying that demo Black Hawk helicopter was one of the greatest moments of my life. Now I've had a lot of great moments, right? I, the moment my kids were born, the moment I got married, the moment, like I've had some killer moments and obviously this doesn't compare to the family stuff, but it's like right there on the next shelf below it because having wanted this for so long and having dreamed about it and having come from like this poor kid who had nothing to now I'm able to go out and purchase my own Black Hawk helicopter, like that's a feeling of accomplishment that uh, I'm damn proud of. And like I said, this helicopter isn't just for me. Our plan is to use this helicopter to help others, to entertain you guys, to be able to provide support on missions where really only a helicopter with these kinds of capabilities can perform. I love how clean it is, man. That whole layout right there is just... It's more modern than the current Black Hawk. Absolutely. Today. That glass cockpit, yeah. synthetic vision, terrain warning system, yeah. autopilot. You gotta, you gotta learn to not fight the aircraft. Yeah, that's what I was doing. And then when I would when I would release the trim, I'd already be fighting that direction, and then it'd jump over there. That's right, yeah. And my 105, I'm gliding through turns, and whereas with this, he's like full power, full power. So yeah, it's yeah, you're, uh, full power. You're, you're 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 powering through stuff that. Just yep. a different experience. Now I thought this was going to be more like a hey, sit over there and don't touch anything and just smile and and have a good time. 
No. That was not the case. They literally threw me in the pilot seat. They had the co-pilot right there next to me. And he said, all right, helicopter's yours, take it away. And I grabbed the controls and I took off on a Black Hawk for the very first time under all my own control. Nobody else was touching it, nobody else was doing it. And uh, that was a wild experience. Just picture flying a school bus, very maneuverable school bus. There's really no other way to put it. All right, we're gonna get on the road. Hey, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate right. that. It's great flying. Good 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 day, day, thank you. Appreciate you. So after we went on the test flight, we got on the road and boom, smooth sailing. We got there way ahead of schedule. In fact, we were not even planning on getting there until about midnight and we ended up rolling in around like 6 p.m., which is fantastic because Joe already had everybody on standby at his facility ready to unload the helicopter, unload the blades and get us back on the road to St. Louis. Because remember, we are on a tight timeline to get this whole truck and trailer turned around and get back home. We pull up, boom, wrecker pulls up, we hook it up. Within 10, 15 minutes, we are picking up the Black Hawk from the helicopter and dropping it on the ground in Lexington at Thoroughbred Aviation, where it's gonna spend the next couple of months getting all this work done to it. All right, we're here. We're at the Lexington, Kentucky uh, airport where Thoroughbred Aviation is. This is where Joe has his shop. And in front of us, I'm seeing a big rotator wrecker, which I believe is probably what Joe has on standby to uh, unload us here. Also, this is a bigger airport with Delta flights and TSA, so we have to go through the uh, security process. They're gonna come check everything out. And then uh, once that's good, we're pulling through the gates, I'm strapping the uh, Black Hawk and getting her unloaded. It was a smooth trip, super smooth, all the way from uh, Huntsville up here to uh, Kentucky. I'm driving through Kentucky. Anybody from Kentucky watching this, you live in a beautiful state. Should have seen hands the whole way, just, just drooling over the property. It's thoroughbred, and now get it. Oh, yeah, thoroughbred horses, get it. Well, now I'm, yeah. Did you say thoroughbred? Like thorough Bailey? Thorough Bailey. Thorough, thorough. Thoroughly bred. Thoroughbred He's. We just passed the castle and he's all frazzled. We're actually a little bit ahead of schedule. We didn't think we were going to get in here until dark. So we're going to unload relatively quickly and then get headed back to St. Louis. I've just been smiling this whole time. Just ever since I flew that Blackhawk this morning, I'm just giddy like a little kid. Just happy as can be. pounds of uh, lead bags that we hang off the front. That helps get the center of gravity where it needs to be. So otherwise it would hang two tail low. Boom out, pick me up, I'll drive out from underneath and then he'll set it back down and then tow it in there. day right here guys just so smooth no stops from dot no issues with the ports we had all our permits filed thanks to uh, brian at jbc transport brian stepped up big time to make this trip happen for us giving us his truck and the joe midwest uh, military equipment letting us take the trailer like such a dialed setup
This was a very big moment for me because it's something that I've wanted for a really, really long time. And it's taken me a while to get here, but I'm finally here and I now own a Blackhawk that I'm gonna be able to use for private use and for search and rescues and for recoveries and for all these different missions that we plan on taking it on because I didn't buy it just for fun. I mean, I am definitely planning on having fun with it, but this thing is an absolute monster. It fits like 15 people. You can haul like 9,000 pounds from the cargo hook. As you saw in the demo flight, they have motorcycle carriers. You can basically adapt this helicopter to do do just about anything you need it to do. But like I said, first things first, we gotta get the maintenance done, the inspections done. We have to do a lot of paperwork. I'm telling you guys, in order to buy an ex-military aircraft and make it able to be used in the civilian world by a private pilot, not easy. And then obviously I have to get trained in it. I have to get a specific license. I have to get a, a type rating because it's such a massive helicopter that weighs over 12,000 pounds. In fact, when this thing's fully loaded, the gross weight is at 22,000 pounds. Now to put that into comparison, the heaviest my BO-105 or any other helicopters I've flown in the past are 5,000 pounds. So I'm going from a 5,000 pound fully loaded helicopter to a 22,000 pound fully loaded helicopter. I'm ready, I'm stoked. This is the perfect opportunity for me to be able to take that next step in my flying career and for us as a group to be able to find ways to solve more complex, more robust, and more difficult problems from the air rather than from the ground all the time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That's a wrap. We did it. And we're ahead of schedule. We're unloaded. Trucks are ready to hit the road. We were going to stay the night here, but no, we're going to head straight back to St. Louis, get an early start on getting back home. Now, listen, I realize that buying a Blackhawk and owning it like personally, the way that I'm doing this is something that probably haven't seen many people do before, especially coverage on YouTube. So you need to let me know how much of this you want to see. My plan was to show you kind of like the high level, like we picked it up, right? Now we're dropping it off a thoroughbred and Joe, my guy, is going to go through it. Let me know how in depth you want us to go on this as far as covering it. We may not cover everything on the main channel, but I might do a little separate channel to cover some like the real technical stuff of the build. But you guys definitely should plan on seeing a full series of Blackhawk videos, including some of the build stuff, some of the modifications and improvements, because by the time I fly the thing back to Salt Lake in September, it's gonna be a whole different animal, completely different color. It's gonna look brand new and I will have gone through all the necessary training to get uh, my license to be able to fly that thing because you actually have to have a separate type rating to fly a helicopter that big because of the weight. So I wanna show you guys that process. I'll show you some of the FAA paperwork. I'll show you some of the crazy, insane paperwork that we have to go through for a private pilot to be able to operate a military aircraft like that. But let me know guys, drop your comments below. Let me know what you wanna see, how much of this you wanna see, and uh, we'll just keep on cranking it out. You probably won't see another Blackhawk video until end of June, because that's when we'll come back down for the maintenance flight. With that said, we got five hours to St. Louis. We gotta drop off some trucks. I'm sweating, I haven't stopped sweating since we landed here in the Midwest, but I want a Blackhawk. Let's go!